Okay, be nice. Don't be mean. Be nice. Be nice. Oh, hey, this is the Pixel Buds Pro and they sound not fantastic. Damn it. Let's start off nice and easy. Design. I think it looks great. Nice clean lines, rounded surfaces everywhere, really nice looking earbuds inside that actually are color matched with my Coral Pixel 6. That's kind of nice, isn't it? But from a usage point of view, the case is nice, easy to pocket, but the earbuds, well, they're a little tricky to get a grip off to get out of the case, but are even more confusing to put back in the case. Just aligning them seems like a little bit of a puzzle, perhaps even more puzzling than the Soundcore Liberty 3 Pro. And that's really saying something. From a fit and comfort point of view though, the earbuds are nice nice and comfortable, at least for medium to large size ears, although my wife tells me that for smaller size ears, they're not the most comfortable out there. Her point of reference is the Apple AirPods Pro, which to be fair, is one of the most comfortable Bluetooth earbuds ever. If they do fit you though, they're not coming out, regardless of whether you're sitting at your desk or you're running 30 kilometers a day, three times a week, which is something I do. What, I could do that which sends us diving into the apps and features. Before that, do the firmware update. It comes with a day one firmware update and I cannot stress as to how important this is. The firmware update itself is not a fantastic experience. It actually takes about 10 minutes and you've got to stay on the firmware update page. If you want to use your phone for do other things, you can't. You can have music playing in your earbuds, but you can't actually do anything else because if you navigate away from the page, it stops the update and you got to restart it all over again. In fact, for me, it just stopped it randomly three times in a row and finally I got it done but it's a little bit of a buggy experience. When you do it though, it does two things that I could figure out. One is it gives you volume EQ, which at low volume bumps your bass and highs up a little so you can hear a little bit more of the music even at low volumes, which I don't think is really of any use in this buds. They're already bumped up, but also it changes the sound signature and that <laughs> Boy, is that important. More on that in just a second. Now, it doesn't have an app, but it is superbly integrated into the Google ecosystem. So if you've got your Bluetooth options, you have your buds, you click on the settings icon right next to it and it takes you to all your settings. You can see battery levels of the earbuds only, but if the earbuds are in the case and paired, you can see the case battery level as well. And below that, you see a number of features. Not quite as many as I would have hoped for, but let's talk about some of the good stuff first. You've got a little toggle here, HD audio, you should turn it on because that turns on AAC. Unfortunately, you don't have any support for higher resolution codecs. Then you've got multipoint. Multipoint's done really well, but there are two different types. You've got the standard multipoint, which works across devices regardless of their operating system, but is limited to a maximum of two devices. If you want more, as long as you've got Android devices and they're all logged in with the same Google account and your Pixel Buds are paired across all the devices, then you've got multipoint across multiple devices, just the way Apple does it. And between those those two versions of multipoint, you've got a pretty seamless multipoint experience. In my testing, it worked just as advertised. Now you also get an option to find your device one of two ways. One, you can send a tone through the earbud that you might have lost and you can go searching for it. Or you can use the last known location, retrace your footsteps and hopefully find those earbuds. You can also switch between active noise cancelling and transparency mode or toggle volume EQ, but you can also do that through touch controls. And that is something that I think Google has done really well. Now you can customize touch controls but only the touch and hold function. And you can set it to either activate your voice assistant or toggle through your noise cancelling and transparency modes. That's it. That seems quite limited, but actually it's not. See, where competitors are limited sometimes to two taps and three taps, the Google Pixel Buds Pro have swipe up and down for volume, single, double, and triple tap for all the other functions. And between them, honestly, it covers all the functions. And what's more, they're actually mirrored across the earbud. So even if you've got one earbud on, the other earbud actually gives you access to all the touch controls. And that's not all. The swipe forward and back basically increases or decreases your volume. I thought it would be fiddly, but actually it's done really well. Even if you just graze one of the touch controls just on the edge, it picks it up and it changes your volume. Honestly, the touch controls have been done fantastically well, so kudos to Google for that. And just in case you were wondering, zero to 100% volume takes 15 swipes. So each swipe is approximately about 6.668% volume. Yeah, I, I stayed up late to find that out. Now you do get Google Assistant and you get something to check the seal of your ear, but that's about it. If you're wondering where the smart features went, the smart features that were there on the older Pixel Buds, Google's taken them away. Adaptive volume was a pretty cool thing for the Pixel Buds. Basically, they raised the volume of your music to drown out the outside noise when it sensed outside noise. 
that's no longer needed because these guys have A and C. That's good. But the attention mode was a pretty cool thing. It was where the pixel buds would listen out for things like dogs barking, children crying and so on and turn your volume down so you didn't miss those audio cues and that's a really cool thing. Why would they take that away? Not only that, there's no graphic equalizer. One of the most advantageous things of having a Bluetooth earbuds over wired IEMs, apart from not having a wire, is the fact that you can EQ them and the EQ gets stored on board. So no matter which device you're using, that equalization applies automatically. According to 925 Google, it is coming in a firmware update down the line, but it's something I really do think should be there out of the box, don't you? Which brings us to sound quality. Now, active noise cancellation is actually quite decent. I found it cancelled out most of the noise right up to the upper mids. And then after that, you can sort of hear a lot of what's coming in, which is par for the course for this price point. I think the Sony Link Buds S do a little bit better, but this is quite comparable to say the AirPods Pro, the One More Evo, maybe even a smidge better in some cases. The transparency mode is actually a little bit of an amplification, but to my ears, they sounded reasonably natural and there's really not much more to say about it. Where there is a lot to talk about is the sound quality. Actually, there's not that much. Before the firmware update, it was like this. And after the firmware update, it became this. And if these squiggly lines mean nothing to you, let me break it down. Uh, before, horrible. After, much less horrible. In fact, I would say right now, it's actually in a pretty nicely tuned state for uh, Bluetooth earbuds coming from a company that doesn't do audio. It's pretty okay, but it's not great. Now, $200 should buy you some level of sound quality, but there's a few issues. Number one, it's limited in codec to AAC. No LDAC, no Aptex HD. I feel like that's a pretty big omission. And it shows because across the frequency range, there is a notable lack of detail, a lack of resolution, which I do not expect at this price point. The highs are okay. There's a little bit of air, a little bit of space because of the high extension. That's not bad. Mid sound, pretty pleasant, but the bass is where a little bit of a problem lies. Now there is sub bass, but again, there's that lack of detail, but I think they boosted that sub bass so high, just so you wouldn't notice that there's no mid bass. Imagine if a drummer sat down at his drum kit and stepped on that pedal for the bass drum, only to find out that the hammer that hits the bass drum is covered in cloth, not just one or two strips of cloth. No, no, that would be just fine. An entire wardrobe of used underwear. The hit of the drum just does not hit with impact. It's just a badly defined mess, a blur of mid bass, if you will. It's just not very good. And as such, I think the entire sound experience can be summed up in one sentence. The Pixel Buds Pro is a reasonably decently tuned non-high-res experience. It's certainly not as high-res as you hitting that subscribe button down there. Now for battery life, first of all, you get wired charging on the case, so that's nice. And the earbuds themselves will last for at least six and a half hours in my testing. That's with AAC codec, active noise cancelling on, and volume at about 70% the whole way. And that includes a firmware update though, so there's a chance you get actually a little more in your usage. You know, the thing about the Pixel Buds Pro is you've got this distinct feeling that Google's moving one step forward, two steps back. Like for example, they give you a nice pair of comfy earbuds with wireless charging in the case, multi-point that works really well, touch controls that work really well, but they don't give you all the smart features that they used to give before, they just took them away. They give you the pro moniker in the name and they give you active noise cancelling. But then they take away equalization and they limit you to the AAC codec and they basically give you a pair of earbuds that don't sound like they should do for $200. See what I mean? One step forward, two steps back. And I guess the true test is for $200, what does the competition do? Well, take a look at the AirPods Pro. Now they're not as fun a sound, but they are better tuned in that they are more resolving across the frequency range using the same codec. And they have very comparable active noise cancelling. Then you've got the Sony Link Buds S, something that comes with LDAC support that has much better sound quality and slightly better active noise cancelling as well. Not to mention it comes with the Sony smart features out of the box on day one, plus equalization, plus customization of noise cancelling and ambient sound modes. All of that from day one, the way it should be. Or take for instance the One More Evo. It's $30 to $50 cheaper and yet comes with very similar levels of ANC, decent call quality, battery life is a little less but it does have multi-point and it saves you some money. And there are other options that also do very similar things but either save you money or at least cost the same and give you more features. Oh and by the way, all the devices I'm talking about are reviewed in depth on this channel so that subscribe button's right over there. Just you know, 
you know what to do. And even if you make the argument that, hey, these feature drops are what Google is known for, across the next six, eight months, more features will be added. Well, two things. Number one, look at the competition. The AirPods Pro that I'm comparing it to is two years old at this point. The Sony Link Buds S, probably what, four to six months old? One more Evo, two to three months old? All of them have already come out months before and are already competing with the Pixel Buds Pro, which means the Pixel Buds Pro is just playing catch up. And even if those feature drops come, what do you think the competitors are going to do? Those guys are already working on the next version of their device, which means Google will just continue to play catch up. And for $200, that's not a good look. But if you still want reasons to buy the Pixel Buds Pro, number one, you get a comfortable device, a pocketable device, and one that has really good touch controls and multi-point. Also, one that you can color match to your Pixel Buds 6 for what it's worth. But reasons not to buy it is the competition gives you equal to or better active noise cancellation. The competition might cost you the same or even less. And the sound quality on the Pixel Buds Pro is just nothing to write home about and really should not be as mediocre as it is. I'm outside, I'm on the balcony. There is a fair bit of traffic noise outside and I just thought I'd do a bit of a real world test for the Pixel Buds Pro microphone. So what do you think? Is my voice coming across clearly? Is it a little broken? Is it a little metallic? And is it able to cancel out all that traffic noise and now a little bit of wind noise as well? You tell me, is it worth it for you? Till next time, stay happy, stay peaceful, stay colorful. Namaste.